Hi, I'm Nigel Redman, Ear Level Engineering. Today's subject is dither. What is dither and why do we use it? Okay, what is dither? It's the process of adding noise to a signal before reducing the sample word size, the resolution of the sample. And why dither? It's done to preserve information that would be lost otherwise, and this loss results in an unpleasant distortion. So, how can adding noise help us to retain more information? To explore this question, we'll look at an image processing demonstration. We start with an 8-bit grayscale image, showing different percentages of black. To make this example extreme, we'll truncate the sample size, in this case the pixel depth, to a single bit. Here is the result of the truncation alone. Not only have we lost the levels below 50% completely, but all of the levels above it are now 100% black. We can no longer discern a difference between them. Now let's try it with dither. Back to the original image. First, we apply noise at the 50% level. That is, for each pixel, we randomly increase or decrease pixel values from 0 to 50% of the full range. Then we truncate as before. See how we've retained the original information this time, including relative gray levels? Reduced to black and white pixels, the addition of noise allowed us to retain the relative gray level information statistically. Pixels in areas of 85% gray now have an 85% chance of being black. 15% gray areas have a 15% chance. The process for audio is fundamentally the same. We still add random values between plus and minus 50% of the lowest bit that we want to retain. Except that we do it twice before the bit reduction step. This gives a triangular probability density function, or PDF, and avoids the effect of noise modulation. You can think of this as rolling a pair of dice instead of a single die, resulting in a distribution that yields more values around zero than at the positive and negative extremes. Before exploring dither in audio, I want to clarify what I mean by truncation error. Truncation is simply discarding bits when reducing the sample word size. The truncation error is the amount we discard. Note that I don't differentiate between truncation and rounding error. Rounding is equivalent to adding one half bit offset before truncating. We can't hear a constant half bit offset, so we can't hear the difference between truncating and rounding in music. So let's look at the effect of truncation error on audio signals. We start with a high resolution sampling of a sine wave. When we reduce our sample size using rounding, we see the coarser stair-stepped result. Note that we're zoomed into the plus and minus 2-bit level here. While the quantized approximation can be quite good at high signal levels, we see that relative error becomes large at low levels. Below the half-bit level, we lose the output entirely. At the half-bit threshold, the sine becomes a pulse wave with high harmonic distortion of the sine wave. We have additional significant low-level thresholds and level-dependent harmonic distortion and aliasing. These thresholds and other distortions that depend on levels and relationships of signal frequencies to the sample rate are what we aim to fix by dithering. First, we add noise. Here's our sine wave with triangular PDF noise added. And here's the result after rounding to the target sample size. What we've given up is apparent. We now have background noise even when the signal is silent. But look at what we've gained. Even with the signal below the half-bit level, we see the sine wave encoded statistically in the noise. The triangular PDF noise smooths out the transition between bit levels, eliminating the threshold problem. We've traded signal-dependent thresholds and distortions for a constant, smooth background noise, much like tape hiss. And remember, this is a very low-level hiss for 16-bit audio and above, one that you'll hear only at extreme playback levels during silent passages, far below the cassette tape hiss of old. There are different flavors of dither, but the process is fundamentally the same. Triangular PDF dither is the most basic and common form used. Other forms of dither shape the noise towards high frequencies, where it is less easily heard, reducing it in the mid-range, where the ear is most sensitive. A key takeaway here is that dither noise doesn't simply mask truncation distortion, it randomizes it, changing its nature to something that is less bothersome. We'll cover more about dither, focusing on when to use it, in an upcoming video. 
and be sure to check my other articles on Dither and other DSP topics at earlevel.com.